Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, and this is week 46. Now, I'm not going to lie, the news this week is really not all that interesting. So I had to kind of dig around and I decided, well, I can just uh, go ahead and talk about boring stuff or I can talk about current stuff and then kind of add on to it so you guys actually learn something. So I decided that I'm going to mix the news with a little bit of regulation today. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to actually highlight one of our students that's doing something that's really awesome in our Drones for News segment. The next thing I'm going to talk about how many UAS you can actually fly as a remote pilot at the same time. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about delivering TP with your drone and then some regulation that we need to think about. So let's get started. The first thing this week, I want to talk about a Drones for Good story. And this comes straight from one of our students. His name is John Zegling. I hope I'm not miss missing up your name too much. And John reached out last week to me, sent me an email, and uh, he said that he's doing something for his community. And uh, as you know, a lot of businesses right now are closed, including a lot of restaurants, but some restaurants are doing takeout food. And so what he's doing is actually he's going to restaurants or offering takeout options, and he's taking pictures of the people, the owners of the restaurant, in front of their buildings using his drone. And these people are holding their bags of food, as you can see here in the pictures. And then at the end of it, he's sending those pictures to the business owners so they can put those on their social media and tell people that they're available for takeout. And he's doing all of this for free. So John, thank you. I think this is awesome what you're doing. And, uh, and I really hope actually that when you see this, maybe tomorrow or maybe next week, You'll go out to local restaurants that have businesses that are offering takeout and you do exactly the same thing. And if you do, please, please, please send me pictures so I can share with other people as well. Again, I think this is an amazing idea. John, thank you so much for doing this. And I, I know the community enjoys what you're doing. So, um, so this, I just wanted to share this because this made my week last week when you sent it to me and, uh, and I wanted to share it with everyone. The next thing I want to talk about is actually a new story that I saw in Spain and this company called Alpha Unmanned System. And uh, they get the approval to fly up to six of their uh, UAS, their gas powered helicopters UAS, and they're, they're usually pretty big. And uh, they get the approval to fly six of those with one operator. And this gets me into thinking about something that we that actually quite a few people miss on the FAA exam and, uh, and during their training is the fact that in the US under part 107, uh, actually 107.35, there is something called operation of multiple UAS. And basically what the FAA says under 107.35 is that you may not operate or act as PIC or visual observer for more than one UAS at the same time. Okay, so this basically says that if you're in charge of one aircraft, then you're in charge of one aircraft at once, and that's it. Now, there are waivers available for 107.35. I don't know of many people that have that, but I'm sure they are out there. And um, this kind of leads me to the next thing too, which is another thing that people miss quite a bit on the exam, is the fact that it is actually possible for two remote pilots to exchange, to transfer the controls, and this is under 107.19, as long as there's two requirements, as long as you maintain visual line of sight of the UAS, and as long as there is no loss of control between the transfer. So it is possible for two people to transfer. Let's say that maybe you had a long mission, you have a drone that can fly for several hours, and you need to transfer the flight controls to another person, to another remote pilot, then you can actually do that under 107.19. Another thing too that's interesting and, and sometimes gets confusing for students is the fact that under 107.12, for example, they talk about the remote pilot certificate requirement. Who needs to have a remote pilot certificate? Well, you can operate a UAS under part 107 with two different things. You either have a remote pilot certificate with a small UAS rating, or you actually can be under the supervision of a remote pilot in command, and that remote pilot must have direct control of the UAS or be able to take control of the UAS. So this happens. Some people uh, want to start flying under part 107. They don't have their certificate just yet, but they hire someone, a remote pilot, to come and sit right next to them and uh, provide them with guidance and be able to take over the control if necessary 
necessary. Now, the FAA says there's actually three different methods that you can take over the control of someone. And the first one is by standing next to them, which is pretty simple. This is what I do with my students quite a bit when I fly in person, is I'm sitting next to them and I'm basically standing next to them and I'm basically ready to take over the control if something happens. Another system that's available is called a body box. And the body box system is basically two different controllers and the, the, the instructor has the ability to switch controls and basically take over the aircraft in case something happens. So if you have a student, they have a student controller that they can fly the aircraft. And if you need to take over, then you can just flip the switch, remove their access and basically take over. When I started flying, um, uh, P uh, FPV with a friend of mine, with Don, who was actually one of the instructor at Pilot Institute. That's what he did. He had his uh, FPV and he gave me uh, a body box and he basically was controlling the aircraft before I crashed it, okay? So he could take over. Uh, a third method, the FAA says that you can actually have a way to basically turn on or off a safe mode and that safe mode can be basically the aircraft hovering if, if uh, or going into a holding pattern if necessary if something happens. So that's the three different ways that the FAA says you can uh, take over as a remote pilot for somebody else who is not a remote pilot and is learning. Okay, so I'll put a link down there. I just thought this was an interesting thing. It's kind of a confusing area. Some people don't really understand all this. So I just wanted to get it out there. If you're a part 107 pilot and you already have your certificate, maybe you didn't know about this. Or if you're starting for your exam, there's actually questions on the FA exam about, about just this. The last thing I want to talk about today is delivering TP or really whatever it is else that you want with your drone. And uh, there's a video that came out this week from San Francisco where somebody was bringing a roll of TP to one of their friends and uh, because they were, well, they ran out, you know how this is going right now. So uh, I just wanted to bring some regulation. I know it's kind of a bus kill, but um, of what you should be doing. What is actually in the regulation under part 107 that would either prevent you from doing this or maybe be careful about what you're doing by doing this. Um, one that comes to mind is 107.49 and under section E, it says ensure that any object attached or carried by the small UAS is secured and does not adversely affect the flight characteristics or the controllability of the aircraft. Okay, pretty straightforward. If you're going to attach something, you need to make sure it's not going to mess up your flight. Another thing too that people miss uh, every once in a while is 107.15. And 107.15 says that you, as the remote pilot in command, must ensure that the aircraft is gonna be safe to fly before you take off. And, and in flight, if you notice that something is not safe and it could uh, adversely affect the condition of flight, then you need to come back and land. So 107.49 basically says, if you're going to attach anything to your UAS, you need to make sure that it's gonna be safe. Now, if you're seeing the video that's playing in the background here, I have a little game that we can go through together. And I want you to start thinking about the, the factors that are going to be affected with having somebody attached to the bottom of the UAS compared to a normal flight. And I'll get you started. Okay. The center of gravity location. This is a big one. If you're taking my class or if you've took, taken my class before, uh, you know that I go in detail over the center of gravity location and make sure that it stays within the envelope, within the limits of the aft and the forward CG. So that's one thing. Added weight is something else. We need to make sure that we have enough lift to create the added weight. There's plenty more. So I want you to go in the comment and tell me what you think is being affected by carrying a roll of TP or something else underneath, the, uh, underneath your drone. Obviously, on top of all this, we need to continue thinking of the regular stuff that we have to worry about, which is a visual line of sight. We have to make sure we maintain visual line of sight. Also, not flying over people. And then lastly, any kind of airspace approval that you need to think of. So if you're going to deliver a TP to your neighbor, just keep these things in mind. And uh, if you do, please take a video and let us know how it's going. All right, this is all I have for this week. Like I said, it's kind of a light week. So uh, hopefully we get back to normal very soon. If you have any questions, any comments, uh, like I said, uh, comments, rude remarks, anything, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, always happy to interact with you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We're uh, this close to being to 3,000 people, so maybe you can be the 3,000th subscriber to this channel. And as always, you have a great week, and I will see you guys next week.